Today we're going to go through the process of making this part here in Autodesk Inventor. There's a couple different methods to make them happen. The first one is an added process. Well, what we can do is we can make our first piece and then just continually add parts of our product that we're making until we get to our final spot. The nice part about it is that it's rather simplistic and then I just make a rectangle and extrude, rectangle and extrude all the way through my part. The problem that I don't have with it is that I've got to make a lot of extrusions and so it's a little time demanding and then I also uh, have to orient the part a whole lot when I'm making it. And so it's probably not the best method because I had to do about eight extrusions here. The subtractive method, what I do is I'm going to make a block so I can sit there and say how big of a piece of material would this come out of and make that two by four by one inch block and then slowly cut pieces away. All right, so that's one way. Probably a more advanced way is to just develop a really good first sketch. And so what I realize is that this is a constant thickness. So if I go up here to the top, and I select extrusion here. You notice I don't lose a lot by bringing the end of my part up, and that's because my first sketch was kind of rather complex and encompassed all my shape. And so I just have to go through and add my two holes past that. And what I'll notice is that there's only three parts or three features to make this. And so it's probably a more effective way to make it than my other ones, which were seven and eight. Another method is we can do a very feature rich process. And so I can look at this part and say, this side looks exactly like that side. Why, if I, why don't I just make this side and mirror it over? And so to do that, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to make an initial extrusion. I'm going to add my hole on the side, my hole on the bottom, and then I'm just going to mirror it over that plane. And that's another way to do it. You're really going to have to figure out with your designing process what's your best way um, as you go forward. But let's go ahead and make this again. And so we're going to go in and we're going to start a 2D sketch. And we're going to start this off by developing it with a subtractive method. And so I'm going to um, develop the base off this wide plane because when I make it I want it to look similar to the orientation off the part that I'm making. Select X, X, Y here. I'm going to go down here and make my rectangle. Add my dimension to 2 for my total height. Add my dimension to 4. I can't see it anymore so I'm going to select my view cube to bring it in. And since all my lines are now uh, dark, I know I can move on because everything's fully constrained. I'm going to select extrude, and I lost everything again, so I can go up to my cube and bring it down if I want. And we're going to go out a distance of one inch. Select OK. And now we have the blank that this part's going to come out of. Let's go ahead and start our next 2D sketch around this front face. I can see everything I'm working with, so let's go ahead and get in here. I'm going to hover my cursor right over that point. If you notice, it goes from yellow all the way to green. And by doing that, by starting it right there, it constrains my two sides of my rectangle right into that point. And so now I can dimension it to where this is now 1.5, and this is my 1. And I got those from taking my 2 and my 0.5 and then my 1.5 minus my 0.5 here to give it two sides. And since I'm here right now, let's go ahead and develop the other side. Just select rectangle again. Get right on that point. And I am able to sort of bring in the height right there. So when I'm making it, it's about the right size for me. So now I gotta go one. And this should be right at 1.5 right on. And so now I have that sketch done. Everything again is fully constrained, so it's all black. I'm going to go to 3 models, select extrude. And now what it's doing is it's asking me for a profile, I'm not assuming what I'm doing. And so I'm going to select here and there. And you notice it's trying to add material rather than take it away. So I've got to modify it over here from a join to a cut. So we'll cut the feature off, or the material off. 
by distance, I'm going to go all. And that way, if I ever modify and change how wide this part is, it's still going to stay cut right there, which will be very nice. So select OK. And now we'll start making our two middle cuts here. And this one and that one. And then I'm going to select a rectangle right there. And right there. All right. What you notice from my two rectangles is one, I was able to start on that line, so it's initially black, and so it's fully constrained to the top, and the other one's not there yet. And so I'll show you how to work with that in a moment. Let's go ahead and dimension our part. So that's one. Uh, my width here is one. And from there to there, I've got 0.5. This one down here again is 0.5 and one. So what you notice is it did assume and added a constraint between here and there that these two need to be vertical uh, to each other, which is nice. I can then say, all right, well, that's nice, but I really need to constrain where it is because when I grab my yellow part here, I'm able to move my rectangle up and down. And so to do that, I'm going to go up here to constrain. I'm going to select a horizontal constraint. Whoop. I had that part selected still. So to horizontal constraint, I'm going to click on my point right there and click on the bottom part of my rectangle. You notice it jumps into place for us, which is nice. I'm going to go into 3D model, select extrude. It's going to ask me for my profiles again. I'm going to select this one and that one. Go to cut, select all, select OK. And now we have our base feature and we just have to add these holes. So let's do those in a couple different ways. I'm going to start my sketch right here. It's going to orient me a little bit, so I'm going to click here. I want to work on that one. So we'll go ahead and draw a circle. And then I'm going to dimension it to the sides of my part. So there's that. So that's 0.5. Another method here. 0.5. And then my overall diameter here is 0.5 again. Select extrude there. We're going to select extrude here. Again, making a cut. I mean, profile. Making a cut. Distance through all. Cut. And now I'm going to add the back one. I'm going to do it in a different way. So I'm going to start a two sketch right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a line. So this down here is one inch by one inch. And my circle is directly in the middle at a half inch from each side. And so I'm going to apply a little math here and just sort of make a line from there to there. And that's just for reference. So I can sit here and just draw right on top of it, not to worry about it, or I can make it a construction line to where I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to select circle. I'm going to hop right on there. I want to go there and get the center point there. And mathematically, this is going to be an exact center no matter what. And so if I ever modify the width of my part, this is still going to be in the center of that flange, whereas the other one's going to be a half inch and a half inch from the sides. I'm going to add my dimension here. 0.5. I'm going to select extrude again. Well, let me bring it into a view where I can see a little bit. Let's just click home. And I'm going to select cut. My distance is going to be to all. I'll select OK. The third way I'm going to make this hole is I'm going to use the hole tool, which is immensely useful. To do that, I'm going to select the face that I wanted to put the hole on. And then it's going to ask me for a reference. So I'm going to have to reference off this line right there. So you can see that you know it's going between there and there. 0.5. Then I'm going to reference the next side. Click. 0.5. And so now I can look at my hole and I can have it be a distance to where we'll add a little point at the bottom. We can select how far it is uh, and my diameter. Or I can change it to go through all and do it just like I did the last one, get my third, fourth hole from it. This is just a little reference spot for me so I can see what's going on. And there's a lot more going on with this tool than what we're doing right now. But that's all right.
I'll go ahead and select apply. And since I select apply, I reopen it up. But I don't need to dance my X out of it. And we have our part, which is great. And it looks very similar to the one that we currently have. So I'm very happy with it. Let's go over here and check our volume. If I go into eye properties, if I go to physical, update, what I can do is I can check that my volume is 3.107 cubic inches. And if you're trying to make this part, if you get that same volume, you're going to know that you made that part right, which will be very nice. So I hope that helped you out. I hope that you're able to develop this and have a good success with the program when you're initially getting started. And good luck.